I've seen the light. Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode of Design Talk, I want to talk about this design that I did over here for my ring light. So one of the first things I want to start out with, though, is maybe you're not familiar with what a ring light is. Well, I picked this guy up off of Amazon. Super cheap. is about 15 bucks. And one of the things ring lights are really good for is forward-facing fill lighting. And one of the things I was noticing is on a lot of my prints with the 3D printers, especially the time lapses, I was getting a lot of shadowing from the heads because the light in my shop is, is overhead light. So I needed to be able to mount this to that system, but yet I needed the camera to be in the center of this ring. Now, they don't sell any adapters or anything like that that goes on to the system to do this, so I had to design my own. So I went off to Fusion 360 and created this. And so I want to talk a little bit about my thinking in the design process. So one of the first things I needed to do was to be able to orient the camera in the center of this ring or roughly in the center of this ring. To do that, I needed to be able to come from the bottom up because as you notice, it has a ball head tripod adapter down here. Now, I could have mounted it to the directly to the ring itself. Uh, it does have a quarter 20 bolt up here, but one of the pieces that I like this is to be able to do a little bit more finite adjustment. So I had to pick up about 50 extra millimeters here to accomplish that. And that's okay, because I took that into account in my design over here. So as you can see, it's kind of simplistic in the concept these openings go on to the rail system. I use these quarter 20s to cinch to the rails and then I simply mount to this base this um, ball head. Now I designed it a little bit so this was a little bit AMS dexterous so I could move the light forward and backwards not only in the rail system but also on this bracket too. In addition I could use this bracket for other things for example mounting other cameras because one of the pieces that I like to do when I film is film with a couple cameras so I may film with my Canon with a tighter field of view and then I may use an action camera to get a wider field of view at the same time and then when I edit the video I can go back and forth between a narrow and a wide field of view of the same thing so this gives me a lot of different options so I get to mount the light I can use it for another camera if I want so it's very flexible so these are some of the things to think about when you run into a problem and you need to design your way out of that problem you know first off what do you want to achieve so I needed to achieve putting my camera in the center of this ring I wanted to be able to keep this uh, ball head for some finite adjustment and so I had to take this into account in the design. Now, this is one of the nice things about this rail system is it allows you to mount different things to it. So I had a good starting point. The second piece is these nylon bolts. I have a link to them down below. Uh, you can get them off Amazon and other places, but they're just super handy to have in stock. So I keep a stock of um, half, three quarter, and one and a half inch. Uh, I, I got about a hundred of each all the time in stock because they're just so handy and now one of the things I do like the one and a half inch because you can cut these really easy with a, a circle not a circle saw with a hacksaw or even a pair of wire snips they cut very easy the other piece is they're non marring for the most part so when I put these on and cinch them to my rails I'm not going to mar my rails. So that's great. So again, the design thinking that goes into stuff like this. Now, the piece that excites me about this is, is I went from Fusion 360 having a problem, going to Fusion 360, and printing a part in roughly an hour. So I designed this part, and, and the longest piece was actually printing it. So it took about an hour and a half. I printed it at about 0.3 layer height. I did print it in PETG. I did use about 25% infill and a couple other things to make it make it stiffer. Now, also, uh, one of the big things outside of the threads that I love in Fusion 360 is fillets. Um, because, again, you can see here how I've built in fillets here for strength. Also down here how it's rounded and, again, very strong. I also built up for the quarter 20s to go in here. And uh, so they had extra area. 
because the five millimeters I used around here, I was a little bit concerned that I wouldn't get a good cinch on there and uh, I would pull the threads out. So this extra bringing me up to 10 millimeters works like a charm. So these are some of the things that you need to think about again when you're approaching a design problem and you're solving it. So whether it's with additive manufacturing, subtractive, all, all basically the same. The concept really goes into the design and we're really bringing part design closer to part production every day. So this is what makes me excited. So hopefully you found this interesting. I'll have this out on Thingiverse so a link will be down below as well as links to the lights in the 15 millimeter rail system. If you're interested if you're a video producer, these are great things to have, super economical. Uh, don't forget the bell button over there, which means go down, hit the bell. I put out regular content so you're notified. Also, don't forget to subscribe. What? You're not a subscriber? I put out regular content, tons of playlists. Check them all out. And swag shops up there. A lot of cool swag out there. And we'll see you guys in the next video where we do something else cool. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.